us pray. Almighty God, we may finish this on the presidential goodness. We are praying that the offices of rulers in parliament, for the work of society, will be blessed up in the coming time. We beseech you to be all with our band in favor. As your servants, we may be pleased to call to the performance of such important trust in this land. Let your blessing descend upon us here in Parliament Assembly and grant that we may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under the liberation. In so just and faithful manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you committed to our church. All which we ask in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
buy to buy house. The executive was given 350, and we were given 40,000. What is important from an aspect of national interest is that we need to give confidence to the Zimbabwe so that they don't think that we are busy planning. Where and how did the 400,000 come about? Was it in the group? The 350,000 for the executive, was it in the future group? It is the 40,000 for the MPs. But I can stand and say the one for the MPs was in the group. So people now believe that we are on a plundering exercise. It is therefore important for the Minister of Finance to come to this house and explain to this house, which is the house for the people, where the 400,000 came from, the 350,000, even our 40,000, so that this institution maintains its integrity and dignity. Otherwise, people, it's really a shame that we who pass the budget can approve 40,000 for ourselves. We will never do that because our raw oversight requires us to be well capacitated. If there's anything, we must be paid more than the judiciary and the executive because we are that institution that provides oversight. If these other institutions are being given more money than us, then how are we going to conduct our role of oversight when we are poor? That's why now the aspect of corruption is in the, in the, in the portfolio of committees which are there. For example, the agriculture one, where members are now working with other institutions to make money. Madam Speaker, the nation needs to know. That's the reason why I say even our 40,000 must be explained, and I know that that was in the blue book. So what is now happening, Madam Speaker, is that we are all 30,000 US dollars from the money which was in the blue book. When is that money going to come? I don't want to pretend as if I'm begging for it. It is our right for us to have that money because it was approved by this August House. When are we going to get that money? 80,000 was approved. We got 50. There is 30,000 which is remaining. They were given duty free certificate for a second car, which is 60,000. How are they going to buy that car if they don't have the 30,000? The, the, the companies that we want to buy vehicles from are prepared to give us a car for 30,000 as a down payment, and then the rest they can structure. So I'm then appealing to you to explain to this house how we are not being given what belongs to us. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. We cannot be on our knees all the time on petty issues. This was a, 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 a matter this house approved. So therefore, the Minister of Finance must come and explain the 400,000, the 350,000, and our 30,000, which is outstanding, which by right we should have by now. We cannot have members of Parliament leaving this, uh, leaving the, 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 the eighth thinking. Of, of this parliament without getting what belongs to them. The, the, the stance that we have is a mere push, they have not been serviced, and so forth. So, where do we then go from here? That 40,000 we still have it, we want to put it in our property, but yet those areas have not been serviced. What does it make of us at the end of the day? The government cannot lie to this institution. Let them lie to everybody, but not this institution which is there for the people. We must be as the poorest cousins. Yes, we the most part of all cousins and so forth. That must go. We must get what we want. Because the people of this country will be lost if we don't do what we agree to do. This is a simple matter. 400,000 must be explained for the judge. 350,000 must be explained. Where is it in the group? The 50,000 we got is in the group. The 40,000 is in the group. I can stay here as a legislator to say it was approved, but the rest are not being approved. We cannot go into this election when people are suffering, when people are being given. For the, they are entitled to loans, yes, but the process and procedure must be understood. We can't be quiet on that. We must know, or else the government will be known to the government that wants to capture the judiciary. The judiciary must remain independent, and they are entitled to loans, but where did this money come from? Thank you. Thank you very much.
ensure the enjoyment of fundamental rights in <coughs> as enshrined in various instrument, instruments uh, of the state's constitution as subscribed in section 246, specifically the mandate of the commission are to monitor issues concerning gender equality, to investigate a possible violation of rights, to, re to receive and consider complaints from the public, conduct research into issues related to gender and sexual justice, and to recommend changes to laws and practices which deal which lead to discrimination based on data. To advise public and private institutions on steps to be steps to be taken to ensure gender equality. Also to recommend affirmative uh, action programs to um, achieve gender equality. Also to recommend prosecution for criminal violation of rights relating to gender. To secure appropriate redress where rights relating to gender have been violated. Do everything necessary to promote gender equality. Madam Speaker, ma'am. The major milestones of the 2022 annual report investigation. In accordance with section 246H uh, and also C, carrying out investigation of possible violations of rights relating to gender equality is one of the key functions of the Commission. <laughs> Further, the Zimbabwe Gender Commission Act also mandates the Commission to initiate public uh, inquiries on possible gender violations by tracing its investigative role. Key investigations pursued um, under the year in review include conducting a multi-sectoral stakeholders inquiry in child marriages and sexual exploitation of young girls. Received and investigated over 500 cases of child marriage <coughs> and sexual exploitation. Received and considered complaints which varied from sexual and gender-based violence, property rights, land and labor disputes, among others. Offered legal advice through its toll-free number and assisted walk-in clients who visited the exhibition stand at the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair as well as the Harare Agricultural Shop. Monitoring. To its oversight role uh, to monitor issues concerning gender equality with a view to ensure compliance with gender equality provisions in the Constitution and other regional and international instruments on gender equality and equity, which the country subscribed to. The Commission managed to. Gender Commission wanted to 
I think the minister will never make a mistake is in Geneva or just a delegation. They want to put their way to be in terms of dialogue on the one night. Because the minister has been promising me, they have screwed in the ministry of Women and Affairs and the Gender Commission. If we can put pressure on the minister to ratify the convention one night, because it is a sport that has affected both sectors, both in government and in the private sector. And also in our own homes, you will be. I'm on record the same people in our own homes. The men are committing sexual harassment. Our domestic workers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I see the Honorable Minister was going to say that you did wrong, but with all due respect, I wanted to request that if it's possible, we be given time to look at the report and possibly debate it on that. Thank you. Uh, okay, I understand. Point is that the honorable members are here to debate, so we can't not debate. The honorable minister, I have a question for the honorable minister. Do we have the speech that we can read it down? They don't speak to the report. Thank you very much. Because they'll be eaten up. No wonder why 
there's no participation of the girl child in this country in terms of sport because of this league. So the issue of sexual abuse in sport is quite serious. And what is important is that FIFA itself was, was supposed to stand for the women of Zimbabwe. And it was about time that the sexual harassment was discussed. Because where there is no justice, a lot of people suffer. You know, the hashtag was stand with the Zim women. And FIFA must be for equality. Where there is no equality in gender, it becomes a problem. FIFA knew about this sexual scandal of the Bible two years ago. They knew about it. That's the reason why, besides the misappropriation of funds, which is the administrator's affection <laughs> head, the aspect of sexual abuse is serious. So to me, they have not been held accountable. I don't know why the Gender Commission has not at all mentioned this. Why is the Gender Commission not bringing it up? Zipa has done it, it's been swept under the carpet. FIFA has come, it's been swept under the carpet. The Gender Commission, which is supposed to be outstanding, has also swept under the carpet. So, what then, what role then are they playing if they are not able to bring these issues to the fore? It is the duty of the Gender Commission, Madam Speaker, to create an environment which is safe for women to participate. That's why they are there. That's why this August House, in its wisdom, you know, supports what they are doing so that they are able to do things properly and so on. You know, and when this thing happens, global solidarity is important in doing this. So global would expect people to do the gender commission has not, and they have presented their reports here, and it's not really coming up with solution in terms of how we're going to deal with this. So today is a dark day for women in sport because we're looking up to the gender commission to be able to expose this, to mention it, and to also give what measures have been put in place to ensure that this will not happen again. So, Madam Speaker, the issue is pretty important. You know, it shows Mr. Speaker to say that I'm, I'm talking of the women's issue. I'm sorry. I'm very passionate about that. So, I'm very sorry. I keep addressing you. Mr. Speaker, so, when now that the report is out, and there has not been a strong, the recommendations did not at all indicate how the cartel or check all this, the sexual harassment will go on and so on. So that environment that I was talking about is quite important. The most difficult issue about this sexual harassment <coughs> is the life of these people after sexual harassment. That's who they say. So the steam has gone. You know, if you met, meet women who have been raped before and they narrate the story, it's not in my life anymore. It's like they are half dead. So, you know, not only that, post that, what measures have been put in place for that healing to happen? Sexually harassing a woman is more damage to a society. And we must see recommendations which are punitive. Instead of us coming up with recommendations of protective view for people to go to jail, these sexual abusers must go to jail. They are the ones that we were supposed to push it to go to jail, not this uh, stupid protective uh, view, uh, punitive measure to be able to, to punish you. Where are we as a legislator here to ensure that we protect women from being sexually abused? And I'm looking to the men here saying, where are you? Are you also part of the team that sexual abuses women? Where, where were the men, the gender champions? Why were you part? 
He views the father to not speak. Remember that these are the children. These are the relatives. Why have you not done it? I speak about this because it's a very strong issue. We need more gender champions. And the only way we can also deal with this is the more gender champions that we have, this situation will not be as much. I want to appreciate the Honorable Minister of Sport for bringing this issue up here, standing firm for the rights of women. I'm not, I might not agree with the way she runs sport, but on this issue, I totally support it because it's an issue of national concern which requires all of us to be part of. The Gender Commission itself must be well capacitated. They must be well capacitated. They must also look at the boy child. Today, because of the absence of some men in the house, the young boys now become the sexual partner. They now become the sexual partner. And I saw the report did not talk about the other gender in terms of the boy child. What is the gender commission doing to protect the boy child? Not only that, men equally have been sexually abused by being forced by their wives to exercise their conjugal rights. Some of them are beaten up not to leave the house until they are able to, 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 to conduct it. No, but I'm not married. I'm talking about those who are married. <laughs> but why? The problem is that why are you also, you know, taking a loss which is not yours? Why are you having so many women who cannot satisfy the one in the house? If you decide to do that, be single like me, so that you're not questioned. You're not paying time for dinner. Because when you decide to get into this game, be safe. Don't be faith. So men again are also in a way being abused because they get home their time and they do not act accordingly. Conjugal rights to women are important. And you know what I'm talking about. So those who are married, may you also ensure that you are able to balance you know, your games. 50-50. Not one is skewed to the government of the small houses and the big house not getting enough. It's unacceptable. <coughs> no wonder why they're not walking you inside, they're taking the keys, and you end up with this in the house. Because they're taking the keys, they're not bringing it anywhere. So that must stop. So the gender commission must also be able to restrain women from being emotional and beating men and telling them not to go to work until the exercise is conducted. So I want to thank the General Commission for submitting a report. It's also one of those commissions which really does trust. It does submit its reports on time and they are all over. They must continue having gender champions, especially the men, so that we are able to protect the girl child, the women, and this sexual harassment that don't have it. I want to thank you. Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute to this very important report that the Gender Commission gives us. I, I want to thank you.
how it was that is from the chief now. That report is supposed to come not only for the gender commission, but for all other chapter basic uh, commissions. The chapter basic. Yes, commission. It is supposed to come to this house. It's uh, supposed to come to this house and they're supposed to be debated in this manner. Um, Honorable Speaker said the other issues have been ventilated on by my Honorable Brother Chairman Miso. Um, in that, I also just want to applaud the Honorable Minister of Sports for taking a stance even in the case of adversity. In that um, way, um, the fair sex is abused, there is need uh, protection because everybody is born of a woman. I'm um, yet to, to see someone who is born of a man. I am a he or she uh, advocate. I'm a gender, a gender champion myself, honorable speakers. So I will speak in the same mode and voice like uh, honorable. Temba Miswa has uh, spoken in terms of chastising what happened in the previous executive of uh, the Zippo board. If they had uh, uh, stolen money or otherwise, that maybe could have been condoned because they were first time of offenders. But the issue of uh, women's rights abuse is definitely an and uh, forgivable, honorable speakers, especially in this country where we have women that uh, are more than men in terms of numbers. There's no reason why you should abuse women who are close proximity to you. Um, it's certainly un unjustifiable and it is unforgivable. Um, Mr. Speaker, sir, I just want to say the Gender Commission should also cast its net wide in terms of conducting both their inquiry and also their business in terms of uh, protection of uh, uh, gender rights or women's rights, um, Mr. Speaker. Because the Issues to do with poverty, they take the face of a woman. And you find that a lot of our women are in the vending business and they are vendors. I say this because where I come from, in Chegu, to West Constituency, um, with, in, with, with impunity, the council, the Chegu Municipality, will take the ways of the vendors without retaining them. And because they have said the women are selling their ways at an designated point, if you look at the rights of uh, um, human rights as enshrined in the Constitution, what they are doing is ultra bias the Constitution. So, my proposal to the Gender Commission is to look further afield and make sure they probe the business of local authorities in so far as it relates to their handling of uh, vendors. Um, Mr. Speaker, luckily, I have an order of the High Court that says the municipality should give back the ways of the vendors, predominantly and maybe 100% of them are women. It is my hope that the Gender Commission should take uh, interest in such court interdicts and orders that have been given by the High Court so that they can see the implementation and the carrying out of that order um, that would have been headed down by the High Court so that the women can feel protected by the Gender Commission. Mr. Speaker, um, going to
to the next issue that uh, uh, brings about the infestation, the, the issue of uh, an infested approach to women by uh, abusive um, men and the, the environment, the issue of housing. In 23A, Mr. Speaker, houses three families in a three room house of 10 each. And the most of those family members are women, and in particular, a girl child ages in Mr. Speaker's. So here is an opportunity for uh, girls to be abused by a housing uh, setup which is a deficient of uh, robust, resilient, effective and efficient infrastructure development. So the data commission should take interest in interrogating the housing delivery system of the municipalities and the local authorities. Where I come from, three quarters of uh, the, the houses or the properties in Jekyll are owned by one person. Mr. Speaker said because of corruption, because of systems that are archaic, moribund, rudimentary, and antiquated. Mr. Speaker said it is time that um, we root out this corruption using the Gender Commission. I am alive to the issue of the Land Commission, which is uh, crisscrossing the width and breadth of this country, looking at the ownership of the farms and the uh, um, and also the title to the title deeds for the properties, but I request that uh, deliberately the Gender Commission interrogates the issue of uh, expansion and ownership of housing to avert, avoid, and completely annihilate the scale of the uh, child, male child abuse, women abuse. Where there is 10 people in one room, there is both more population, conjugal rights like my honorable Timber Minsoy has said, and procreation that cannot be undertaken in such circumstances. Here is an opportunity uh, to, to completely remove this uh, 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 issue, the stage of uh, women abuse. Mr. Speaker said, where there is so many people living in one room, the woman is tasked with going to a well. In my case, where there is no tap water, I have managed, however, with the help of the Second Republic, His Excellency the President, to drill a plethora of uh, bowls in my constituents. 43, first and foremost, on a budget trade with um, um, Mr. Jonga, the late may he so rest in peace, was in GTR, and the local authority, where I forced them to sit uh, stands in return for uh, the drilling of boats, 43 first, and then 63 later on, were championed by His Excellency the President through GTF again. So my point is, the women are charged with bringing the water from either the bowl or the well. And as long as there's so many people in one place, there's bound to be women and girl child abuse. Mr. Speaker said, it, gives, it brings me to the last point that I want to, to talk about. There is need. I am glad the Minister of uh, um, Mines and Mining Development indeed did this deputy about here. And uh, where, we, where I come from, the great height is at its, uh, the width is at its highest, less than kilometers in my district, in Matona and West. It is my hope and uh, um, uh, perfect view that the Gender Commission can also take the opportunity
opportunity to have an interest in the mines and the mineral laws and indeed practically in terms of um, uh, women in mining and um, small scale mining and artisanal mining because the women are the fairer sex. They are pushed out of the business in those places. Mr. Speaker, sir, I say this because uh, we have the Mines and Minerals Act, which is quite material, which I'm quite sure when it comes here, we can make sure that uh, it does not have the power to, uh, to, to reverse the gains of our uh, independence in terms of the land redistribution and the mines and, and the <coughs> Agrarian Reform Act of 2000, where we think that Agrarian Reform Act can protect our women that are in mining because Section 368 currently outlaws prostitution <coughs> without a license. But whereas the A2 and the A1 farmer, the woman, is busy digging the backyard, the backyard and they find a piece of gold. And section uh, three of the gold act says <coughs> you will be incarcerated without the option of a fine if you are found with the uh, gold possession. So it is my thinking that the gender commission should be also in um, tandem with the, the Ministry of Mines try and liquidate some laws that are material and make sure that we create a safe haven for <coughs> our women. Wherever possible, there is need to capacitate their extractive industry, uh, the, the women, especially in mining, because as a nation, we are involved with a ubiquitous amount of mineral wealth. And here is an opportunity to capacitate the woman and annihilate the state of women abuse through the commission. Those would be my submissions, Honorable uh, Speaker said. And I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to ventilate some of the issues that have uh, been given to me by the women from Czech West constituents, Sarah Chibuwa, Maitri Rija, Tricia Yamazao, and a lot of uh, uh, others, including Ladi Wachikurio. Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to thank you. Is there any further debate? I second. Yeah, you're 
wish to respond to the address report of the parliamentary committee. on the amendments to the Mines and Minerals Act and I'll go straight to respond point by point to the issues which were raised. Chair, the first point which was raised is that the benchmark of 100 million for one mine structure minerals is too high is discriminates on the basis of economic status and allows for monopoly by foreign companies. That was the first, that's the first observation which I wish to respond to. Chair, firstly, it must be taken note of the fact that there is provision to reduce or increase the amount in certain specific cases relating to uh, uh, certain specified strategic assets. Also to note that when classifying assets as strategic, these are important assets which are meant to uh, uh, which, which require a lot of capital and are meant to be exploited on a large scale basis. Therefore, it is important that there is the requisite uh, investor who has the sufficient capital to enable uh, ideal explo exploitation of the same asset. Chair, however, we wish to put in a provision to the effect that notwithstanding the minimum investment figure, for exploit, exploiting the strategic assets, if following a report by the geological survey that the particular strategic mineral in a certain area can or is suitable for exploitation on a small scale basis without sterilizing the greater exploitation of the resource in the whole area, then the minister shall permit any such small scale miner or group of miners to exploit this deposit subject to the other provisions of strategic minerals being complied with. Chair, I wish to respond to the second item raised, which is in clauses 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and I sum up the issue raised, and the issue raised is that the members of the board must not be appointed for any indefinite period, and that the composition of the board is biased towards ministry officials, yet some stakeholders are not represented. Chair, the response is as follows. It is important to note that this is a quasi-judicial board whose main function is to assist the ministry in the administration of the bigger forms of mining and exploration titles, such as exclusive exploration licenses, mining leases, and special grants. Ministry officials are important members due to their expertise in the various technical fields of the value mining value chain and knowledge of the mining title. However, it is proposed that the term office for ministry officials is observed by the committee be fixed at a maximum of four years, just like any other members of the board who are outside the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the ministry. We also, however, Chair, concede that there must be balance on the board and accordingly we propose to reduce the number of ministry officials to fight with the permanent secretary being the 56. We also, uh, Chair, wish to put in a provision to the effect that to constitute a forum wherever the board sits, at least 
praying of the members, president must be from outside the ministry, and praying must be from the ministry. The next point, Chair, I wish to respond to is that the question of law should not be referred to the Supreme Court. It is not a court of first instance. Chair, we concede and we propose that this be amended accordingly. The next clause, Chair, is clause 5.4, page 5.4, and the issue which has been raised was observed is that a late holder who withholds consent to pay must not be penalized by not being allowed to pay for mining title over the same land for 10 years. That consent of the late holder must be sought at the stage of applying for an exclusive prospective license and that there must be compensation to the late holder for the damage that occurs due to mining activity. Chair, the subsoil resource, as opposed to the surface resource, does not belong according to the law to the president. This is the law now, and it has been so far. We also, however, Chair, would want that the first discoverer of the mineral to have the right to be able to work on the discovery. There is nothing which stops any farmer from securing mining rights on his farm if he has knowledge through his own unaided effort of the existence of the mineral. The proposal that the consent of the land holder must be sought in the state of applying for an EPL is not practical because when one applies with exclusive prospecting license, they do not have any specific area that they want to prospect for. It is difficult to anticipate a discovery which might not exist. Also, to take note that here we will be dealing with land which is open to prospecting and begging. <coughs> On the issue of compensation to the land holder for damage to the land, this is covered since there are provisions related to the rehabilitation of the environment in the bills. There is also provision for payments to the land holders on the provision of the ESOP, which must reserve 1% of this fund for this fund. The next item, committee chair, that the registration of land for the cultivation and raising of animals disadvantages the communities and that the clause allows the PLT to usurp the powers of the Minister of Land. Our response, Chair, on the contrary, this clause actually benefits the community by allowing them to reserve land against begging and prospecting. Without this clause, the land would remain open to begging and prospecting by anyone, and this actually helps the community. In pursuing this process, Chair, the PMT is not exercising any powers belonging to the Ministry of Land. The purpose of the application is to register land for cultivation and grazing purposes, so that no mining title may be issued on it. The next item, uh, Chair, is clause 59, and the concern is that the decision on whether there was deception on the part of the mining title holder regarding the number of blocks registered should be made by the board to avoid abuse of power by the PMT. The response is as follows, Chair. One needs to take, to take note that the PMT is responsible for issuing mining blocks of land. And there's no reason why it should not be allowed to administer. It must also be noted that the decision on whether there was deception or not is only reached after all due process is done. The surveyor having gone to the ground, having carried out investigation, and the title holder is then also made given opportunity to make representation. Chair, 
The next item is on clause 72.8 and clause 111. These clauses state specifically that the decision of the board and the minister or they, they, the these clause state that the decision of the board and the minister are final. It is considered that no one should be denied the right of appeal. To make things more clear, we will state in the bill that finality in this context does not exclude judicial review of the board's or the minister's decision. Chair, the next point relates to clause 130 and 131. It states that the concern that the cancellation of mining locations situated in area covered by mining lease affects the rights of those that already had mining titles, and that the prohibition against impeachment of title once mining lease is granted also affects the rights of those who already had certificates of registration in the area. There is four hours for this photos, Chair. One, it's need, we should take note that a mining lease in simple terms is just a con consolidation of contiguous mining blocks belonging to one applicant. One does not include mining blocks belonging to someone else when applying for a mining lease. The certificates of registration that are deemed to have been cancelled are then to have been cancelled are therefore those belonging to the mining lease applicant. As one cannot hold both the certificate and a mining lease over the same area. The cancellation is just an acknowledgement that the in in individual blocks are no longer valid as they would have been fused into one item. This makes it administratively easier. Regards the title, it must be noted that before a mining list is granted, all interested parties are given a chance to raise their objections. This is done to ensure that knowledge that is not open to prospecting is included within the mining list area. It would hinder progress in the mining industry to want to wait until the lease is granted and then object to the issuance of the lease, which will then take ample time to do so. Ample opportunities are afforded for all parties to ensure that their mining titles are actively reflected in their rights. In any case, a mining lease, once again, it's a consolidation of current claims, hence the question why the objections since arise now when claims were not challenged before. The next observation, Chair, is close to what is which states that the expropriated mining location should be transferred to the state and not the minister. And the, um, you know, the, the, our response is as follows, Chair. The provision of the constituted of the constitution quoted refers to land. However, under this clause, what is expropriated is a mining location, not land. So the constitutional provision quoted, we are of the view that does not apply. The transfer to the minister is justifiable under the circumstances, since the mining location would then be transferred to another person. Chair, the next observation is close to 59.6. Officials undergoing this plan proceedings must not bear the burden of proof. On this clause, Chair, we concede and the provision will be amended accordingly. The next observation, Chair, is that a person who discovers special stones and does not give notification to the ministry must only be penalized if they have the requisite intention to benefit from that discovery to the prejudice of the state. Chair, if a person has knowledge of the existence of special stones, 
And it is proven that there is such knowledge in the field if a notice will be the paper. If they have the knowledge and they intentionally withheld. The last point, uh, Chair, which is um, which was raised, that there are several gap containers and omissions, and the, that is acknowledged and that is since been corrected. So I submit to Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. The the issue of uh, the minimum uh, investment um, on the strategic minerals. Um, the Honorable Minister has said he has <laughs> an obligation to actually a variation of the 100 million in particular for domestic uh, investors or those that are in the small scale. That needs to, to be put in right. It needs to be put in right uh, to say that this is how we respond to this insight Perspective of that, there is what is called subsidiary legislation, which is a statement that is being made. Otherwise, all policy makers are, uh, are empowered to make subsidiary uh, laws that is a statutory instrument. However, it is main aim for us to go through that clause. There has to be a, a clause that states. Irrespective of the 100 million seed, the minister will be empowered to, uh, to put those. The drafting is another issue. I'll leave it to, to those that will inform me. However, it seems to be expensive. Then um, there is uh, the issue, the last issue that the Honorable. Minister spoke to him about the last issue was uh, yes. The people that are out there are, are losing their time. They are not experts. They, they cannot be charged for concealing the knowledge of that there is a, a mineral that they discovered. One, for a mineral to be called a mineral, it has to go through assay. There has to be quantification or otherwise an adjudication to say this is a diamond, it's not gold, this is platinum, uh, it's not one of the PGMs or whatever, whatever. So it definitely would be unfair to, to be open ended like that, to say definitely somebody will be criminalized for assertion. I think that needs to be mitigated. One cannot be criminalized even if they have now been told that what you are holding is a diamond. If you have been holding it for five years, it sounds as though they would have had knowledge that it is a diamond because of its value. So uh, my prayer is that needs to be expired and uh, no one should be criminalized for that because they are not experts, they are not engineers, they are not mining engineers, they are, they are farmers who have been criminalized because of section 22A trying to kill their land. So it is my thinking that uh, yeah, on those two aspects, um, the other close seven, close seven, is eight and nine, I'm quite sure colleagues can be located later on. I'll come back again.
this uh, mines and minerals uh, is, is, is a dangerous thing. And we should support the report of the parliamentary committee. The minister must go back to the drain board and start a fresh. The problem with this bill is captured primarily with the PLC's comment on section 34, which they rejected. The underlying philosophy of this bill is to retain the colonial mentality, the imperial mentality, the post-colonial mentality, that uh, the holder of the mining rights, the superior rights to every other right that is uh, uh, that exists. So the holder of the mining rights, Madam Speaker, ma'am can do anything in terms of this act is even allowed to start building within 50 or 100 meters from, from your main house if you own a farm. A reward of the mining rights, even if the mining rights is discovered on your farm, can take away your land and when you ask for compensation, you can only be compensated for the value of the improvements in the buildings but not for the value of the wealth that is underground, that is discovered, whether it's diamonds, whether it's oil, whether it's coal. So, as long as that philosophy exists which permeates in this bill, then there's a problem. Because it is a, it is a, it is a bill, Madam Speaker, ma that reinforces the, the capture of rich African resources by the colonial uh, white man. And to allow that, uh, Mr. Speaker, man, the holder of land rights must, those land rights must supersede everything that is found underneath. If someone explores and finds that, let's talk business, let's go in the joint venture, but you can't displace my land rights. And so, the cavalier is going to, to, to close 34 by the minister that says, ah, that is the law, you know, the right vesting in, in, in the president is not good enough. We see it in the Kikaman reproduced in section 4 of the Communal Lands Act. Let people who own this country, let people own this country. The white person came in this country in 1890 through various concessions, the large concessions. The old and come on 1890, they took over this land and this, and this mineral. That colonial subjugation is still being reproduced in this act, in this act. So we should reject the legislative amount. The minister must go back to the drawing board and come up with a view that the old man is having. Land belongs to the owner, and land includes anything uh, below it. We support the, the Parliamentary Legal Committee's uh, rejection of the draft provisions of the bill in section 8, 9, 11, and 4, the composition of the bill, the composition. It is cured in favor of the minister. It is cured in favor of the executive. The minister is got the final word. Yet, even as he was giving his response, the minister concedes that it is performing a quasi-judicial function. If it is performing a quasi-judicial function, the more independent it should be, the more the reason it should be, it, it should be stabbed by functionaries other than officers of the ministry. So to have a, to have this whole body stabbed three quarters by staff from the ministry is doing injustice to, to, to transparency. To openness. Right now, the Ministry of Mines is seen as a conveyor belt of Zimbabwe's valuable commodities to sharks. And right now, our country is looking at the way that the Chinese and the Russians have taken over our nuclear resources. Chrome resources have taken over. We are a rich country with with 64 minerals, but we have nothing to show for it. This country is poor. Look at the state of the road in Nelson Mandela Avenue. We, ca we can't choose, we can't pay for paracetamol in hospitals because our minerals are being drained by an oppressive piece of legislation. We 
which doesn't recognize the differentiation, which recognizes the extraction, 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 extraction. No value to the country. So, Madam Speaker, ma'am, we should reject the minister's response to this, uh, to this uh, report. We should stick to the, to the findings of the EOC. Uh, we should, we should uh, ask the minister to go back to the, to the drawing board. When he drafted this bill, quite clearly the minister is oblivious. Quite clearly the minister is oblivious to developments that have been made towards a new homogeneous uh, mining law that has been crafted at the African Union. There's a new mining charter there that recognizes that they are the owners of these minerals and that these minerals should benefit uh, those that, uh, uh, those that uh, mine, those that are the owners of the land. Take, for instance, the Minister of Cavalier is called the Speaker Mount. So the issue of the, yes, the, 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 the African Union has massive literature and model legislation for mining law, which seeks to decolonize the current ethos of mining law in Africa based on construction. This law is not followed, those African model law and must be rejected. But I want to come to that particular. When you say strategic minerals, can only be mined by someone with 100 million US dollars. You are basically to say no local black person can mine the minerals. Well, there's no local black person with 100 million US dollars. Can I land from a total in an But how can you pass a law like that in a country like this one? Very speak about How can you do that? You are basically saying we as Africans, as Zimbabwe indigenous people, cannot mine the best of our, of our minerals. If you accept that, and like Comrade Mugabe, then say it was about indigenization and empowerment. You bring your, 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 your 100 million, but in the 100 million, Mr. John Chibandura, uh, Shuma Mutasa, Shuma Namziwa, Shogomrewa, well, Jira, we must have a say, then we can, we can talk. But to say you can only mine a strategy when you put 100 million, your best guy is saying no black person must mine. What are you talking about, Mr. Winston Chica? Because we are poor black people, we should mind. Yes, the honorable minister. The honorable, the esteemed, the esteemed honorable minister. So you are saying our minerals should only be mined by foreigners who are rich, the simplest of this world, the only mines of this world, the messers of this world. It's an insult to our black skin, Mr. Speaker, man. It's an insult to black people. So that clause doesn't make sense. If you want to say these are high resource minerals that should be mined because they require investment, say so. Then in your next clause, incorporate how we, the poor black people of Zimbabwe, are going to mine those. They have created a state company which must be a shareholder in those, in those companies. But to come with the law of the parliament that is worse than. Say Cobian is mining law of 1923, 44 years after independence, then the speaker man is unacceptable, completely unacceptable. So the minister must do three things. Go to the African Union, get their model law on responsible mining, and we have many people that are going to the African Parliament, including our own Chief Chamuira. Go to them, get that law on the responsible mind. Go to the extractive, uh, 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 extractive industry, transparency uh, 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 association, get their model law. Go to SADIC, get their model law. Constitute a committee of Zimbabwe intellectuals. Constitute a committee on Zimbabwe intellectuals, either appointed by this mind, who then do benchmarking. What is the model money law in your state? In Ghana, in, in, in Venezuela, in Colombia, in South Africa, they spend six months drafting a model law, then come back to Parliament. You can't come with a law that will make Sisu or John Rhodes embarrassed 
embarrassed by the way you are opening up, us up for further exploitation. You can't do that for four years of Brexit. So we should reject it. If we are black Zimbabweans, if we are patriots, if we are nationalists, we should reject this horrible piece of legislation. I thank you very much. <coughs>
talks about the empowerment of local authorities. Let me have to a couple of points here. Okay, taking forward the important one. You see, where it is pretty clear in that is that the state must ensure that local communities benefit from the resources in their area. From the resources in their area. So, what has been done to ensure that we comply with the constitution? <laughs> so, what has been done to ensure that local communities benefit? When local communities benefit, there is some transformation. And not only that, section 14 talks about empowerment and employment creation. That the state and all institutions of national government is evident they must endeavor to facilitate and take measures. Take measures to power. What measures have been taken by this bill to empower? No. <laughs> Through appropriate, transparent, fair, and just affirmative action, all marginalized persons, groups, and communities in Zimbabwe, at all times, the state, with all institutions and agent gatherings at every level, must ensure that appropriate and adequate measures are undertaken to create employment. So, just sections 18 and 14 are good enough. And we are not seeing that in the end. You know, Madam Chair, Nigeria, no matter what you say about them, they gave the biggest resource, oil, the refinery, to one of their own networks. This is the chance for the Honorable Minister to, to shine on the people of this country. And we must see more clear days. With their resources. The only thing that they can do is bring the money here and not take it anywhere else. Because this is their home. They are going to be given to the biggest oil refinery. Where will that money go? It will be in Nigeria. The people of Nigeria will bring it to So we, we must also be able to come up with, 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 with bills that talk to the Constitution. Because if we now don't talk to the Constitution, it becomes very difficult for us to be a serious a country in terms of quite a lot. To me, at what point will we stop the export of raw material? At what point? I'm not in the we, we have been minerals, they leave uh, beneficiation. We have spoken about it. And why, again, are we just allowing people to give us money when they have been married? The minister is African, so are all of us. Not, not all that we are never late. We are not going to be 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 late. We People say to you, we'll give you money when we start making money. Yet we need money right now with the resources we have. Whether they don't make money from the resources that have been given is a different issue. But we now must have something for ourselves. I'm not seeing that. That a certain percentage will be paid right. by whoever wants the resource prior to the money. Once we do that, then we will have serious players coming in without the indigenous nation and they are taking everything. Honorable Jan, Jan, we are giving you this concession. The only people who should be given this concession.
patient over time and in the moment they also be given time to, to find a path. But those who are coming, they have got the money already, they must leave money. And I think to, to just close my uh, contribution to this debate is we seem not to appreciate that Zimbabwe is on such, but the minerals are not on such. So if there's any way of busting such, use Liga, you think the sanctions in Zimbabwe yesterday is not on trade, it's not on Nina. The very same countries that have lobbied for Zimbabwe to be sanctioned still want this Nina. I have friends of mine from America, one of them arrived today, who are arrived. They are part of the Ford thing, they want Nina. They are coming to Zimbabwe. When you have something good, no matter what it is, people will look for it. And for us to buy sanctions, we must be trading with those who pass us on sanctions. <laughs> you keep your enemy close, what we want is money. We cannot be emotional to a point that we now no longer do business with it because we believe we must close out. We have the mineral, all these countries want this mineral. As a result, and I'll end by still emphasizing my number one point that have we done exploration of oil? The minister can choose a company which can come into JD with government, and anybody who wants to do exploration here, the government is responsible for exploration so that they also have the right information. Every area is being explored in this country, but may government take responsibility <coughs> of exploration and be in charge and find a partner and you see that we shall be a nation <coughs> where we quantify things, we're able to understand the <coughs> industry that we have, the, the world of. You know, if you don't know the world of what you have, We'll be going round and round and round and round and round. And I think may this bill talk to that. Uh, I want to thank the, the committee, the uh, Mines Committee. It's not been easy, certainly, going through this. The issue of the farmer and mine, which is first, food or resource. I thought the miner eats food and doesn't. If you look at Zimbabwe, it's all minerals. Wherever you go, it's minerals. In Kwekwe, it's a town built below its minerals. <coughs> so at what point will we be able to then say we also must be able to include and that substance? So which one comes first? Can, can the miner be an average list? No. Can the average be a minor? Yes. <laughs> you see, this is where the issue is. So what you want is the, 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 the mining of these resources better the person who's on the ground. <coughs> An average, a farmer can be a miner. But 50% a minor can be But the farmer can also go into that. This helps the farmers to be able to have their own working capital because with the land reform that happened, there are no other ways of getting money from financial institutions or scholarship. Yes, let them be given the first right of refusal. Let them be told. And then, if they don't want to mind, then it's a different thing for yeah. If some are very religious, they don't mind. Then a JD can be done so that we <coughs> utilize the resources that we have. If you look at the map of Rhodesia, 
Madam Chair, Shanta. And uh, the minister is a good example of what Minwasa has implemented in Punkiji. The areas for mining were reserved, and the areas for agriculture were reserved. <laughs> but today, the areas for agriculture are also mined. And yet, enough food was still produced at the end of the day. So, we have a situation where the mapping of the country itself, Shanda, that's where you see the great roads. If you go to Shuru, the Unki road is great. The most of the Unki road, the Zinplas, the Unki road is great. If you now go back to mining Kamati and all the road network, down the road, the edge is not done, is still strong. Because those are designated areas for mining and those designated areas for agriculture. My dear honorable friend here, the honorable Kashi, who tell that Murugwe was an agricultural area. That's why you go to Gunji in the side. If you go to Kino, you go to Kino in the side. If you go to Lansdale in the side. If you go to Bandi in the side. So it was meant in a way that he would do mine and he would do agriculture. So that mapping is, is, is very important, and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to go back to the mapping that we did ahead and so on. And ultimately, we also, the small scale mining. I know my honorable brother, uh, honorable Luna, is very much into the small scale mining, <laughs> but the environment has been destroyed. The environment has been destroyed. And if we have to bring the big boys who are easy in terms of accountability, because the small scale miners, there's no accountability. Yes, as politicians, you get excited because we think they're important, but I don't know how many of them are it. That's, that's a check for that. But we've been made to believe that the small scale miners have contributed the most, yet the commercial and big scale mining companies pay tax. And it's very same tax we go to the power of the So let us not make a mishap to do what we want out of mining. You see? Let us not make, make a mishap because there's also the aspect of intellectual property rights which at the end of the day must be respected. If you look at companies like Zimplatz, the exploration that they did, uh, areas like GDI, uh, UNGI did, uh, did uh, uh, what is this mine? The, 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 the total mine, which was given to, to Billy Rogers, and I must say that I did help in it, so he did give me. But he never mined, and he sold it for over 100 million. So why would you not give honor to those young, honor to Kashi? That's to sell and give 400 million. He never gave me anything so good. But I, I facilitated for that when one of the was in this. You know? But I did end up facilitation. People say I was extorting, yet I was just doing a genuine business for facilitation. <laughs> but then it was the era of the very same people, the era of the and they say, playing with big helicopters, you know that way. Because that's the one who got my money. But it was then they did talk about it. Thank you, Scott. So, it's an example I'm giving. It was not mine, it was sold to other people. And we are taking all these areas from companies who are reputable, who brought in money. GDI came through an area where it was explored by Zimbabwe. They took it. There's nothing happened. 5,000 jobs were supposed to be created and all. And they're here now. <coughs> and they're here now. They are now looking. They are trying to bring back Zimplas again. So imagine if all this area had been mined by the people who initially uh, explored them. Where would we be today? GDI and the Zimplas would be producing. And what we need to talk about is producing. So when you have no production, the 12 billion uh, income that Mr. is talking about becomes short-chain. So it's also important 
the honorable minister in this bill to take, <coughs> to also be able to review that uh, we achieved what we wanted by giving some of these claims to the other people. And it's not may they go back to the original owners so that they, can, they keep putting in money. What we want is production. There needs to be a review, a review on that. Because people have got them into speculation. They didn't do anything. They opened a few holes, were excited, and all. And then the next thing, the company is no longer there. It affects the growth of the economy because we get budget in this So thank you very much. And for giving me this opportunity. I have no doubt that. And uh, we don't have to rush, Honorable Minister, uh, but with this bill. We'd rather do it properly. If we have to do it in the other term, when others are not here, so what is important is to come up with laws which are sustainable, which will take us forward. I know you have tried the pressure to do it, but if it is said, you will tell. They are all over. 
you know, and, uh, at some point I thought I should probably get my entire family back, you know, so that I protect that. So it's also a very important one, uh, a minister. Uh, I think with a vision that the late, uh, if there's anything that you must do to remember the late, the second time I was in there, is to really fulfill this very precious story. It was close to heart, and he wanted it done, and he had worked hard, he put all the systems in place, and I hope he sees, you know, the, the end of the day, because the passion and work that he put in can really not go to be waste. Uh, I believe it's been a law that he will be able to certainly add value to, to our people, and then that would be my contribution in terms of the celebration story, I think. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I would like to seek leave to ask again and the report for me. Thank you very much. Committee of the whole house, uh, it was the chairman of the committee of the whole house. Uh, I for the purpose and uh, seek me to sit again. What day? Uh, Two September. No. No. Tomorrow.
government 144 of 2022 translated in the month of August 2022. I have to inform that the Parliamentary Legal Committee met on the 12th of June 2023 and considered the particular instrument 144 of 2022 translated in the month of August 2022. The committee is of the opinion that the particular instrument 144 of 2022 translated in the month of August 2022 is not in contravention of, of the Declaration of Rights of any other provision of the Constitution of the month. Thank you.